good evening everybody i'm just getting set we'll start in a few seconds i saw somebody had asked what is this session about this is about artificial intelligence and machine learning in action what do you mean by in action we are looking at some interesting applications which are covered in detail about ai and nml that is the plan for the evening probably 35 40 minutes unless there are a lot of questions and so on this is for the for those of you who are participants in the triple id aml program please note that this is a open lecture meaning other than you all subscribers to the youtube channel of talent sprint are also uh, allowed to attend this event but not that you will have too many of them partly the reason is uh, this is a general topic of uh, interest and um, somebody is asking did i miss something do we need something from the previous session the la previous session was done by shika for the open program on ai and ml and by me for the closed program for the triple it h so if you have missed it you could have seen the recorded video of shika session if you have done neither it is still possible to follow because it is not a coding session by any chance it is more of a backgrounder plus interesting session think of it as like i have said in one of the slides think of it as a coffee house conversation all right let's get started then hey and ml in action what are we going to talk about i am going to share some interesting applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning where did i pick these up i picked it up from the news of course uh, the medium reddit uh, the wired magazine and different places i am not going to go into too much of technical details not much but like i said think of it as a coffee house coffee table conversation those of you who are australians who think it's already beer o'clock think of it as a serious conversation in a pub all right let's get uh, started yeah it's a not a technical coding session but there are some interesting points for study for anyone who's in the aml part of the <coughs> study program or if you are studying something on your own if you are doing something in machine learning or analytics there are some very interesting points of study one of them in particular has a uh, rich the amount of detail enough for us to actually replicate and or modify that for other uh, areas i'll highlight that when we come to that point so what are the things i'm going to talk about i'm going to talk about four things primarily uh this is the first is about plant news diagnosis uh the second is a great article on 538 about uh, analyzing trump's followers the third is kickstarter at arsenal and the fourth is a very interesting i effort by google called ml without code and sashank if you know all these four then there is nothing new in this you could drop out of course of this particular talk because this like we said in the mail and in the blurb this is a general backgrounder for people to get to see what is interesting in aml in action this is not a coding session 
The plant disease diagnosis is a very interesting case study. Uh, cassava plant is one of the most important food items. It's a tuber, it's a root. Uh, it's almost the primary food for a very large percentage of the African population. And any disease in that would make it very difficult for the farmers to survive. So the application in question is a machine learning application that identifies the brown leaf spot disease with 95% accuracy and a red mite disease with 96% accuracy. So that is why this is considered a very big breakthrough in this particular area. Now what is interesting for us as students of AML, it's a behind the scenes, the gears and the fittings are a neural network powered by Google's TensorFlow and the interesting idea was it's a network which was trained on something else and then the transfer learning to this with just 2756 images of both good and diseased leaves from the cassava plant with that as the input all of which came from Tanzania apparently we got the system to work with this degree of accuracy to identify the disease. Now you might say that is pretty standard normal there is nothing interesting in this. The most interesting part is the real impact of this particular application comes from the fact that the code has been done well enough and the transfer done well enough that it operates out of a smartphone. Now we are talking. You have a smartphone, you take a photo of a cassava plant in your home or in your, sorry, in your field and now you know with a very high degree of accuracy whether it is affected by a disease or not. This sort of feedback and diagnosis is extremely useful to the poor farmers in Africa and to the food situation in Africa. So this is one of the few times when you feel proud and happy about the type of work you do and how it impacts in real life. All right. Now you want to read more about it. This is the title of the talk, sorry, title of the article. Phone powered AI spots sick plants with remarkable accuracy and this appeared in the October 2nd issue of the Wired magazine. Now I will also take you through the actual story as you can see. Wired magazine in case those of you aren't aware had its heyday in the early days of dot com it became one of the best known journals that covered advantages, sorry the advances in uh, technology. It's a cult following, it attracted a cult following. It's not that big today but it is still one of the best sources for technical and quasi-technical news. So here is the article, I'll pick up the highlights, you can see researchers have developed a smartphone based program that can automatically diseases, detect disease in a cassava plant which is, I was wrong about being in Africa, apparently this is the most widely grown root crop in the earth and it can do it a very high degree of accuracy. And where is Wired magazine pricking it from? The paper preprint is published in Frontiers in Plant Science, as you can see. TensorFlow is mentioned and Google's Pete Warden Tech Lead on TensorFlow Mobile is mentioned and now you get a little more detail. It has only 25 million parameters, only. I generally blanch at this only 25 million parameters <coughs> and requires only 11 billion floating point operations to calculate its result. Wow! So that tells you the nature of the beast. Now the article goes on to explain how it was done, the transfer learning and the 2056 images, 
information is here, the accuracy data is here. Now they go on to explain why it is a big thing. Even an experienced farmer could do it, but not necessarily because today's sad truth is new diseases arrive all the time. So whether it is diseased or not is very, very important to figure out newly. The experience of a farmer may not cover diseases that come. So the, that is the article. As is typical of wired articles, it's small, it covers in reasonable detail the background and gives enough links for you to proceed further. I found it extremely interesting for the same reasons I already shared with you because it addresses a very important problem of the real world, third world hunger and farmer's plight. All right, now let's get back to our presentation. The next is analysis of Trump's Reddit followers. This is very, very interesting. So I don't know how many of you follow Reddit. Reddit advertises itself as the front page of the internet. Obviously the internet has no front page. What Reddit is attempting to do is it's a user generated content site and people identify how different topics are being talked about a lot in the world and then post the links to those news items. So Reddit does not actually generate news, it is not a news site in that people post articles, they only post links to articles from elsewhere. So the people who frequent this comment on those links to those articles because articles are obviously elsewhere. For example, if I was interested in telling people about this interesting new thing about plant disease detection by using ML, I would go to a particular Reddit page. I will check whether there are so-called subreddits which are indicated by the r slash on ML, go there and then type out a few lines and then give the link like I had done before. So whoever looks at the link, reads whatever little blurb I have written there, then if they like it, they upvote it. If they don't like it, they downvote it. And the things which get upvoted and downvoted a lot move to the front pages, higher ranks in Reddit. So that's how Reddit works. And there are subreddits of great interest. For example, I am particularly fond of the daily programmer where there is a daily programming problem given and of course the Python uh, subreddit and the Atheism subreddit as well as many, many, many others. I follow these three plus the Haskell subreddit because there is interesting stuff in it. Now the, the underscore Donald is the name for the subreddit which is devoted to the followers of Donald Trump, the US president. Now this analysis is done by a site called 538, 538.com on this particular subreddit, in the Reddit in general and on this topic about Donald Trump's followers in Reddit. Now 538.com is an extremely interesting site. Do go there and see it. Now 538.com is a site whose chief editor is someone by name Nate Silver. He is a statistician and he came to fame in 2008 by predicting the US elections in a couple of states. Now where does the name 538.538 come from? 538 is the size of the electoral college in United States. 538 people elect the US president. So in 2012, against many people's predictions, he made very detailed predictions about which states will vote which way in 
US elections. And he explained his methods and published them. So his blogs became very popular. Then his blogs were syndicated by New York Times. A little later, ESPN bought his company and then made it part of ESPN. So now his 538.com writes articles on sports, politics, science, where statistics and data-based approach is applied for all the interesting things. Take a look at the site whenever you have time. Not only for this particular article for which I will give you the link later, but even more importantly for the general approach they take. All right. So, 538.com shows that after the election, they identified that the subreddit had a very large number of followers of Donald Trump and they started trying to see can they describe the characteristic of a subreddit. What do you mean by describing the characteristic of a subreddit? How do you describe the characteristic of anything like that? They gave some very interesting examples. They said, I must be able to establish relationships like this. The subreddit on NBA, which is the National Basketball Association, combined with the subreddit on Minnesota is closest to the subreddit on Timberwolves, which is Minnesota's professional basketball team. In other words, the nature of the postings in NBA and Minnesota when combined in this fashion come as close to the postings in Timberwolves. Those of you who are doing machine learning will see a rich way to look at model this problem of when is a post similar to another post, how do you make that decision. A post is a collection of words, so there are some interesting design and modeling issues and problems in that. So this is what they are attempting to do when they say characterize. Another example they are giving is, if I look at the NBA subreddit and then remove whatever it has in common with the sports subreddit, the whatever remains tends to be very close in content to the sneakers subreddit. Why? Because people who follow basketball, when they are not talking about sports, are talking about equipment. And the most important equipment for a basketballer apparently is the shoes they wear. So that sounds like a very, very offbeat but cool way of using machine learning to understand how people get together and what they talk about. All right. Now, why is this an interesting problem? Why are we even discussing AI, ML and machine learning in this context? The methodology they used is called latent semantic analysis. Read up about it. It's very, very interesting. They analyzed nearly 50,000 plus subreddits, which had about nearly one and a half billion comments in the two year period between January in between 2015 and 2016. Now, those of you who have attended Dr. Vanchinathan's class on Saturday would know he talks about how vectors are the thing for describing everything and this is precisely what works behind the scenes for this particular methodology. They have published a complete code in R. So if you understand Python, you can easily read R also. This is possibly what you should study in a great degree of detail because the article itself is very, very well written. It explains in a reasonably technical fashion. Please remember 538 is addressing the serious reader but still a non-specialized reader but they are also giving you access to the code. So you can read that also. So let us look at the link. As you can see, the title of the article is Dissecting Trump's Most Rabid Online Following. So now they have some very, very, very interesting results and equations for example, if you remove 
whatever is political in the Donald Trump subreddit, what remains is closest to a subreddit where a lot of people makes bad comments about fat people. So, or Donald minus politics equal to hate the fat people. Similarly, if you reduce the amount of censorship, then you have the Donald follower saying essentially send Hillary to prison. Okay. Now, there is a great degree of detail about what has done about this, then where is the interesting stuff for me to talk about. Now, here it is, the data which I have summarized in that slide. Now, there is a detailed explanation of analysis work at the bottom of the article, which is what I want to draw your attention to. The subreddit algebra as they called it for which I gave a couple of examples. Here are the same examples in great degree of verbal detail. Let's read it to understand. Using our technique, you can add the primary subreddit for talking about the NBA to the main subreddit for the state of Minnesota and the closest result is Timberwolves, the subreddit dedicated to Minnesota's pro basketball team. So effectively, they are identifying how close two different conversational points are. That is a very interesting way of looking at neighbors. I can't wait to do this. No, we'll be using Python, but Satya, Python and R are reasonably close that you can follow one if you follow the other. Now the best explanation comes here, subreddit algebra is not a minus b equal to c, it is more like a minus b is closer to c than anything else. And the most interesting point is what do you mean by closer to c? How do you define a distance in this space? These are the questions which linear algebra concerns itself with. So please pay particularly close attention to Dr. Vanchi's classes. There is a bit of a bad news in that there is a lot of hate speech and a lot of harsh words in this. So ignore that for the moment, focus on the signs. And here is the explanation they gave. Even for other subjects, they gave a similar analysis. How does Sanders, Bernie Sanders, who stood against Hillary for the Democratic nomination, how do those three relate? What are the more important ones? And how does this work is where very, very nicely they have explained the idea behind latent semantic analysis. They give an example, determine how related one book or article or speech is to another. Remember, when you do your, uh, KNN is a particular way to find classifications. But the idea of a neighborhood is what we are discussing here. When we say two articles or two subreddits are in the same neighborhood, how are we defining that? That's part of the model. But remember, these are based on words and words have slightly different handling style compared to other subjects. So, as you can see, there is a reasonably technical, though not necessarily programming level technical, but reasonably technical explanation of how this whole thing works. All right. And there is a link for the code here. And the data on the code is also available. So the Reddit comments data is from a collection of 1.4 billion and this analysis was done by R. You can find the code here. So, oh, by the way, we'll be sending you this particular PDF for all the Triple I, the Triple I T H uh, Machine Learning Lab course uh, participants. This will be sent to you, so you will get access to all the links. You can check it out and get the code. But even in, you don't have to wait till you receive it. You should be getting it sometime tonight. 
just go to 538.com and look for Trump's rabid online following you will get there all right I hope that was interesting now let's get back to the couple of other things we have lined up this is personally my favorite it's very interesting but these two we are not going to this and the next we are not going to go into too much of detail this is about a project called Kickstarter Arsenal Kickstarter is a crowdsourcing funding company what's the idea Kickstarter sets up a website with payment gateway enabled and so on and let's say you have an idea you have an idea for I am going to build this thing let's say I have got a nice idea for a small solar powered uh, pressure cooker ideal for Indian conditions but I don't have money to set up a plant and do this but I think it can be done for a small amount of money say some 40-50 lakh of rupees but nobody gives money and all that so I go to Kickstarter and set up a nice page explaining that and giving a link to my web page and say boss whoever is willing to fund me you will get the first thousand pressure cookers will be sold at this price the next 5000 at this price and so on and so on you set up a funding page the idea is people pay you money in advance essentially they are booking advance orders for the product you are yet to design and develop that sounds very 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 dicey but the reality it is not Kickstarter has been extremely successful in this space and I'll show you how successful by looking at their web page. Sorry. All right, its mission is to help bring creative projects to life. Da da da, we'll worry about it. We'll look at stats, very interesting stats. They have raised $3,428,000,000 dollars pledged for Kickstarter projects and close to 150,000 projects have been funded 13 million almost 14 million people are back out of whom four and a half are repeated backers and so on now for each project highest to most successful project every bit of detail is here go look at Kickstarter it's a very very interesting crowdfunding crowdsourcing of funding idea now our interest is in one particular project which till now is touted to be the highest funded camera related stuff by the way I am a very big camera boss I am a very very enthusiastic if not very talented camera person I have a Nikon 750 I lug around couple of lenses and go around taking photographs of birds and people so I have actually uh, gone to Kickstarter and pay $200 for this hoping to receive this uh, item by sometime January February what is this item put very simply it attaches to your camera reads off the viewfinder of the camera compares what it sees with the large amount of existing images it has and using machine learning techniques figures out what is the best setting for what the camera is seeing so that the best picture comes out that's it that's an amazing piece of application of machine learning in other words it has a large number of photographs and the settings as input based on that it identifies for the current picture what it is seeing the best possible settings it also does something more something called HDR and so on and so on it also does some additional useful things like this big DSLRs don't really help in you want to post immediately Facebook they are not very convenient so it also helps on all those but that's not the main point of it the main point is advanced machine learning algorithms help you to get the perfect shot every time the machine learning algorithms learn from a large input of existing good photographs now let me take you to that page see this thingy on top is what is being sold you go to this page and look at it so here is the blurb arsenal is the world's 
first intelligent assistant ultralight hardware lets you wirelessly control your camera and advanced machine learning algorithms help you get the perfect shot with a single tap you can activate settings assistant ai the settings assistant is trained on thousands of great photos trained on that's the key so it is a machine learning software which has trained this piece of hardware to do the figure out the best settings for the scenery before you don't you find the idea as fascinating well it's the idea is fascinating to me definitely fascinating enough i have paid the 200 dollars so these are mock ups so don't get very excited by seeing the content this is all in the future none of this is it ready as you can see this is what i have done pledged 175 dollars it's not available anymore if you want to today if you want to participate you have to go to 500 dollars or more all right now these are all the additional things this software allows you to do but the key reason that i paid the 200 dollars was that i was hooked by that ml part all right let's move on to the last thing i'm not going to talk about this i'm just going to show you the link and i'm going to ask you to play around with it by way of background this is from google's creative labs it is titled as machine learning without coding so it's called the teachable machine the complete code is available it explains how to build it where the code is available and what does it do it captures some images i'm not going to click on this further it captures some images through your camera so you visit the site with your webcam on capture some images through your camera and then you have to mark these images classify them so to speak and after you have classified marked enough of them the program would have learnt enough to identify other photographs of you that is the idea but note that they are asking you to play around with this you don't have to write a bit of code but you understand how machine learning classification works it's a very good thing for you to interact with and play around and figure out how to go about doing it just google for teachable machine google you will get it for those on the triple id h ml program you should be getting the slides i used which contain all the links shortly enjoy yourself playing around with these i hope this session was interesting and gave you a flavor of the type of work across the spectrum that is exploiting ai and ml so that was our intention to give you a flavor of the nature of interesting things that are being done often in focusing on the library in the python code in the data set we lose the forest for the trees i was chatting with some of our colleagues some of them, when i found this was the issue so i said you know what we need to sit back and understand where and how a and ml are actually being deployed is some interesting and important problem so i try to curate a set of interesting and important as well as instructive set i hope i have managed to assemble one as you can see shika has already sent you an email with this pdf and a jupyter notebook on strings and this is only for the triple it participants by the way so do take a look at both and get back to us either on chat for the next program or on email have a good night what is it? 
left of it if you are going to be studying. See you tomorrow in the Python class.